In the city and state where you live. Where I live? Where you live now. Oh, now? I yes. live right here. Okay. In Connecticut. Yeah. In which war did you serve? World War II. Okay. And your branch of service? With the Navy. And what was your highest rank? Seaman first class. In what generations, excuse me, what lo general locations did you serve? In the Asian Pacific. Asian Pacific. Went to Japan, finally. Were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. You enlisted. Um, where were you living at the time you enlisted? Long Island. Long Island, okay. Do you recall the date? January 5th, I think. I'm not 100% sure of that. But. Okay. And what year? 1945. And why did you join? Why did you enlist? Well, my brother was in Germany with the infantry, wow. and I wanted to be in the Navy, which he was very disappointed about. <laughs> but I did what I wanted to do, Good and I you. wanted to be in the Navy. Good for you. I've heard some interesting reasons why veterans chose Navy over Army, but we'll talk about that another time, <laughs> which may have been part of your reason, too. Um, so you chose the branch of service because the Navy because you wanted to be in the Navy, yes. as opposed to what your brother was doing. Um, do you remember your first days in the service? Yeah. Could you tell me about them? My mother and father and my first wife, she wasn't my wife at that time, mm -hmm. uh, took me into Grand Central Station. And we took off from there, an all-night train ride to Samson, New York. Samson? Yes. Okay. That's where your basic training was? Yes. Okay. Um, how, did, how did you feel when you were riding on the train with all the other enlistees? I had mixed emotions. I was excited. Very glad to be there, but I was leaving home for the first time okay. in my life. And who knew where you who knew where you would end up, right? Yes. Um, do you remember your um, any of your boot camp or training experiences? No, it was kind of I remember it. They were uneventful. So basically marching, eating, sleeping, yeah. <laughs> learning to fire, yeah. shoot firearms. I remember most when you had a line up to get into the dining room at, at uh, lunchtime. Mm -hmm. And we, we had to stand straight and our caps would be like that. Wow. It was, that was the biggest thing in the day. If you got called out for that, everybody else was in trouble. Oh, okay. So it was the whole team, yeah. team effort. Was the food pretty good? I couldn't say it wasn't. Okay. It, in fact, I think it was for the whole most part good. Okay. Do you remember any of your instructors when you were in basic training? I can't remember them now. Okay. That was 70 some years ago. Yes. <laughs> How did you get through it? Oh, I did because I was a pretty good athlete in high school. And uh, I could do all that calisthenics and uh, obstacle courses and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any hard time with that because. Some people did. They weren't in shape like you were. Um, after boot camp, where did you go? 
we got on a troop train and went right across the country to San Francisco. Uh, Shoemaker, California was the name of the... Okay. We stayed there for, I guess, four days or five days. I'm not sure of that even, but around that. It wasn't long. And then we got on to the Admiral Benson which was a troop transport. Yes. And it had 5,000 men on it. Wow. Big ship. Wow. It was one of them ships that they cut the middle out and inserted a piece. Wow. But it was very seaworthy. Were you seaworthy? No, I, I got sick. <laughs> like everybody else, but uh, I was standing in line and I was waiting for my supper. Okay. And all of a sudden, <laughs> before you even had supper, right? Yeah, oh yeah, I didn't eat supper that night. <laughs> oh jeez, did it get any better for you? Oh yeah, it. After that was the last part of it. Yeah. What were your first impressions when you arrived in San Francisco and got on that large boat with everyone? <clears throat> that I did the right thing going into the service. Really? Okay. Because a lot of my friends that I was in high school with, <laughs> they didn't want any part of the service. Mm -hmm. They were glad that they got by the draft. But I wanted to be in and that's what I did. Did you have any assignments when you were in California, or were you waiting to be shipped? No, overseas? we didn't. We we marched a little bit, I guess. Okay. And then, where did the um, where did the Admiral Benson take you to? Where'd you go? Okinawa. Oh, okay. And what did you do there? Just waited till our our ship was ready to take on new news crew members. Okay. It was in Okinawa Harbor. And during the night they took us off the Benson, took us to the Sand Gate, and we met all the people that were in my division. Okay. Which was the aft part of the ship. Okay. And the next morning, it sailed for Japan. For Japan. Okay. We went to Sasebo, Japan, which was a industrial town where they manufactured aircraft carriers, the oh. Japanese. Now, did you stay on the ship? Oh, yeah. You stayed on the ship. But you went into the harbor where they were manufacturing them? Yeah. Okay, and what was your duty there? Oh, I stayed on the ship. You stayed on the ship. Was the only liberty that we had was right after the war. Uh, a lot of servicemen were getting in trouble with the Japanese. And uh, so we... We went in pairs any place we wanted to go. Okay. Now, what ship took you to? Were you still on the Adam Admiral Benson when you sailed out of Okinawa to go to Japan? No, we we sailed. We would took a small boat to the Sandgate. Okay, Sandgate. And that was the, the Sandgate was the boat that you were on, the ship that you were on. Yes. Okay. Um, and I was discharged from that. You were discharged from that. So describe a typical day for you when you were um, in Japan. In well, I gave out uh, tools and stuff like that for the day's work. Okay. Whether it be painting or chipping or Whatever you want to call it. Okay. 
just cleaning the place up. Okay. So after you, a long sea voyage, voyage. So you were you were you were in a supply. You you supply the the servicemen would come to you and say, "This is what I need today." And you would give them those yes. things. Okay. Check them out. It okay. wasn't any bigger than this room. Okay. But it had shelves. And that was on land. No. That was on the ship. Yeah. Okay. The on sea the sand bay. I never left the ship. Sand bay. Okay. So, um, where did the where did the seamen go who came to you and took those materials? Were they going off and going to the aircraft carriers? No. No. Okay. No, they were working on the sand bay. Working on the sand bay. Okay. Did you see any combat? No. No. Okay. And were there any casualties in your unit? Anyone that went ashore? The only casualty was me. Was you? I fell into the hole oh, gee. on the ship and hurt my ankle. Well, I was black and blue up to here. Oh. But I landed on my feet. And I had a big, heavy crowbar in my hand. Oh, gosh. And I threw it. I saw it. I threw it away, but when you fall in 40 feet, you don't worry about what, where it was going. And it finally came down and hit me across the back. Oh, no. <laughs> so that wasn't too good a deal. I, they kept me in sick bay overnight, but the doctor was being discharged pretty quick. Okay. And uh, he wanted to get rid of me sooner than I could hardly walk. Oh, okay. So they didn't have any x-rays or anything to see what your injury, no. injury was? Okay. We didn't have x-rays on our ship. No. He, he could have sent me to another ship. Okay. A bigger one that had all that equipment, but he didn't. Okay. Did you see any of the um, the aircraft carriers in, in the Japan port where you were? Yes. Could you see them for you? There was one that was over like this. Wow. And a bomb, bombing had got it. Okay. And uh, there was one other that was under construction that uh, wasn't completed. Okay. But you didn't have anything to do with those? No. Okay. Because they were the Japanese. They were Japanese and... and uh, the Japanese Navy had a free run of the port as long as they kept their nose clean. Okay, because this was after the war, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, can I interrupt for a second? Sure you can. Um, I think one of the, the things that... you got to talk was, louder. One of the things that was most important that what he did is they transferred or transported um, the bombs. Yeah. So you might want to talk about that. Oh, okay. Good. It was a supply ship, and and they picked up. It was a pretty dangerous work. Okay, if you look up, we uh, had twenty three hundred mines. Oh my gosh! If you look up the USS Sanday on online. Okay. Um, it explains what the ship uh, did and uh, and what it was nicknamed. It was uh, it was it, that I think the symbol of the ship was a, a naked woman holding on to a torpedo oh, or a gee. bomb like this, and uh, it was actually on the on the ship, painted on the ship. But I'm sorry, I interrupted. No, that's good. That's good that that you included that. So how would you how would you get the bombs? Did you bring them from Okinawa or would other ships no, come in? From San Francisco. From San Francisco, okay. On this huge Admiral Benson. No. Front. No? No, the Sangay. The Sangay had oh, picked okay. them up in San Francisco and sailed out there and then they decided that they needed more recruits and that's where I came in. Okay, that's when you got on. Okay. Now, did all of the troops on the um, 
on the Admiral Benson go to o Okinawa, and did they all work on supply ships? Yeah, they like were you? shipped off to little smaller ships. Smaller ships, but was it pretty much all um, so soldiers, servicemen that did the same thing you did to yeah. supply? Okay. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit more about the um, the bombs that you had on the sand day? Well, what can I tell you? They were on a cement platform. Okay. That was about that wide, about square. And then the round top on it was where the uh, ammunition was that blew up whatever it touched. And uh, we had 2,300. They were on railroad tracks. They figured that it was the easiest way to get them on and off was to put them on railroad tracks. Show the picture of them. You see the upper deck here? Yeah. That's oh, where, okay. That's where the, the round things are in mines. Okay. And so this we was picked all them up the with ship. a crane. Yes. Wow. And dished them off to smaller ships. Okay, so you, you took them off the railroad tracks were actually on your ship too? Yes. Okay. And then the cranes would take them off and put them on smaller ships. And those ships would well, go in this purpose it was yeah. Okay. And those and those and those ships would be supplied with the bombs. Yeah. Okay. And so they were. You can't were really call ships. it a bomb because. No. It, huh? Mines. Mines. Oh, the mines. Okay. So they were on ships that would have dropped the mines. Yes. Okay. Like destroyers and wow. other small ships. Hello? Hi, Linda. So did you, did you have anything to do with that, or did you see that happening? Oh, did taking them off? Take yeah, them we, off? we had, wow. in fact, I ran the, the winches. Okay. I picked them up and put them on the other ship. Wow. So you would put them on the deck of the other ship, and then... Well, they had a receptacle ship. for them. And how long, how long did you do that before you had the accident? Were you there about a year or so? Yeah, we were starting to prepare the ship for the long trip home. Okay. And we were taking out ballast, which is slab wood. You might know what that is. Yes. And they put a strap around a bundle maybe that big. And it had a hook on it, on the other end. And my job was to hit the hook down, make it tight, with the crowbar. Oh, okay. And it came around and pushed me right off into the hole. Oh, so that's how you had your accident? Yeah. Okay. It pivoted around once right. it was lifted up a little bit, not to move the hole. Had the, was the hole the opening where the these came from? No, they came from the top of the ship. They came from the top of the ship. Okay. This part. Okay, that's right. You showed me that. I'm sorry. So why why was there a hole there? Is that an opening where more supplies were that yeah. would be raised up? Yeah, and okay. where the ammunition came from for bigger guns and. Okay. Did you ever load ammunition too? Oh yeah. Or whatever was needed, right? Yes. Wow. So did your basic training teach you to do that? No. No? No. How did you get how did you get into that? I don't know. I guess I was a farm boy. <laughs> okay. And uh, I I took to it right away. One thing we did have on that on my ship was forty thousand cases of beer. That's important too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that was.
was a, we put it on another ship finally to get rid of it before we came back to the States. Okay. But that got more people in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, did you, did you also have cigarettes? Because I know smoking was real, cigarettes were really important to so soldiers at the time. Yeah. A lot of smoking. Yeah, we could buy them in, on the ship. You could buy them on the ship. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, so you were not a prisoner of war, thank God. Were you awarded any medals or citations? No. No? The two medals that I had were, everybody got them. That okay. was in that state of affairs, which is occupation. Okay. So you were part of the post-war occupation? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, we already talked about your injury. Um, I, I was under the impression when you first told me about it that you backed up into a hole by mistake, or maybe it was late at night, but the fact that you got knocked into it yeah. was not helpful. <laughs> okay. that, that injury really stayed with him all of his life through his back. Because you fell that far. Yeah. yeah. And also the crowbar hitting you back mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So yeah. were you were you able when you did finally so you shipped back to San Francisco? No. no. We went through the Panama Canal. Oh, okay. And up to New Orleans. Oh wow. Was that where the ship was going to go anyway? Well, that's where they were putting it in Mossville. Oh, that's where they were putting. Oh, so your your when you were there, that was the last mission of that ship. Yes. Okay. So you sailed back, and they there was no way to transport you any earlier because of your injuries. No, I was all done with the injuries. Okay. Oh, we, uh, I think that part is probably unclear. That Dad had. Um, sustained the injury and he was in sick bay for just a very short amount of time. One day. One day. In as sick bay. He was black and blue from your I ankles. Told oh you did. And um he you really couldn't walk, so you're I couldn't even get a pair of shoes on. Wow. So and they really didn't do any documentation of the injury either. No, they did not. Oh, so, they did not. No, so your ship. I makes... went after the war. I went to the VA because uh, everybody was getting pensions for one thing or another. Yes, yeah. And uh, they turned me down. Because there was no documentation? That's right. Couldn't yeah. prove it. I yeah, had he... letters from my fellow sailors. Right. That proved that I was knocked off into the ship. But Somebody missed it. Didn't work. That's pretty bad. Now, how did it so it affected you? You couldn't walk very well. What What about your back? That was only for a couple of days, but uh, my back. I went in the landscape business, and. Right. That was bad for backs. Bad for your back. Too. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but you didn't have it. They did. There was no treatment for either your leg or your. No, back they wouldn't shoot. give me any treatment either. That doesn't sound right. But was there a doctor on the ship, or was it basically yes. just sick bay? And no, he he was a doctor. He was a doctor. Uh, not. I wouldn't recommend him to a no. snake, but. <laughs> Pretty bad. Um, so you were you were on the ship until it was when you went through the panel of money and it was decommissioned. Decommissioned, okay, from that ship that you had said before. How much how much longer after your injury was that? Do you remember? I know it's pretty hot the day I fell in the hole there. Oh. 
And uh, I would say it was about this time of the year. Okay. okay. And it, was the ship getting ready pretty soon to go? Yes, to we were putting the, all the guns in. Okay. Mothballs, they called it. Okay. But it was a plastic film that went over the guns and airtight. Okay. Was that in New Orleans or before you left Japan? Well, it was in uh, Galveston, Texas that we did that. Okay. So we went to dry dock, got all cleaned up. And then they put us in a, a regular dock. And you were, you were still in pain and not walking very well, but no one was helping It only you. happened, it lasted for a week or so. Okay. It was more the effects later on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, did you stay, how did you stay in touch with your family? Letters. Letters. And Good old letters. Phone calls. Oh, they you were able to make phone calls. Huh? They could make, you could make a phone call a week, I think. Okay. And that was when you were in Japan, too? Yeah. On the ship. So what was the food like when you were on ship? It was good. It was good? Our cook was excellent. I think the Navy had the reputation. Yeah. <laughs> from what I heard from Greddens that I asked. Did you have enough supplies for what you were doing for your job? Oh, yeah. Okay. I had, we had more than enough. More than enough. Okay. In fact, on the way home, out somewhere out in the Pacific, we <coughs> threw shells overboard okay. that were surplus. We were only allowed to carry so many of this bullet and this. So we had to throw away a lot of them. As you were headed back to port? Yeah. The, the, the things you were getting. Because they really didn't have any place to put this stuff. That okay. every ship out there had accumulated over the years. Okay. Throughout the war. Did you see any battleships when you were over in... Um, yes. One. That you did? And that was in Pearl Harbor. That was in Pearl Harbor. And when we were on our way home. And believe it or not, we, we docked. They had made a dock over the USS Arizona, oh. one of the ones that was sunk. Yeah. And on a clear day, you could see the turrets of the gun. And that was soon after it had happened, so it was, you could see more than you could probably see now. Uh, no, that was in September. That was in September. Okay. So you remember that image of looking? Looking down? Yep. Oh, yeah. Wow. There was something like 13,000, 1,300 was killed in that mm -hmm. attack by the Japanese. Did you ever talk to Mr. Taddeo here in town? No. He was on the I, I meant to, Pearl Harbor. but everybody was around him in church one day when, yes, when they church. announced it. and. <coughs> I, I didn't stay. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting to talk to him sometime. Yeah. I see him I see him with Bill. He would Church know exactly sometimes. where we were. Yes, he would know that. It would it would be he I don't know what scary. ship he was uh, connected to, but uh they were all of big ships were around a, a little island like they call it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he was uh, I guess he was protected somehow. He was behind a bunker or something, but has vivid memories. His um, his great nephew was a student in our class, and when my students were writing letters that year, he said, "Can I write to my my great uncle? Um, is he is he Taddeo? He said he was in Pearl Harbor, and, and I said, "Absolutely, we'd love to hear his story as well." He didn't tell his story, but he's come to our assemblies every year. But I know he has been. Well, he was an old man when I saw him in church. Yeah. He's doing well, though, just like you. Good. He still gets around. And as soon as I see him in Norfolk at the church, and that's a lot of stairs to go up and down. Yes, it is. Yeah, he's doing well. That'd be a neat connection for you. Um, 
Did you ever feel any pressure or stress before you got injured? Well, on the way home, all of a sudden the ship stopped dead. Oh. And we were out in the middle of the ocean. And uh, evidently there was something floating in the water. And they were afraid that it was a mine. Oh my gosh. And uh, so they went around it. But it wasn't a mine, it was just a debris. Oh, okay. Dad, did you tell Mary Louise about, wasn't it Sasebo Harbor? Did you tell her about that? Yes. Yeah. Kind of. What was that? That's where we... Oh, in Japan? In Japan. Yes. And about the ships parading around and then it was Christmas oh. Day? No, I didn't mention that. That's so sad. It's a, it's a good one to talk that about. That is a good one. She wants about. details, Dad. They. It was a minesweeper group that all wound up in Sasebo Harbor. There must have been 125 of them at least. Wow. Now, were these Americans or were these? Americans. Okay, these were Americans. And that's a, they were small ships yes. made out of wood, so they wouldn't. Draw a mine. I see. Really? Okay. Most of these mines were magnetic. Yes. And uh, they all paraded around the harbor and they played old Lang Syne and all that stuff. Because it was the, the signing of the armistice, right? No. Or the end? What? Just before we left. Oh, okay. So, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. They, uh, and they sailed out of the harbor, which was a narrow canal yes. that got you into the harbor. The harbor was tremendous. But one of the, the lead ship hit a mine that was loose. Somebody goofed. Oh my gosh. And it blew up. And I happened to be a Sunday. And I went to, me and a, you know, 10 other guys went to church on the beach. On the beach? In, in Sasebo. And they were just bringing in the dead. Thank you. Remember this one guy with his arm hanging off the stretcher. They were all covered up, but his arm wasn't. And these were Americans? Yep. They were in the ship that blew up, that led the okay. flotilla out. Right, okay. Did you hear the explosion? Yes. You did? We didn't know what it was until the next day. Could you see the entrance to the harbor from where you were moored? Where your ship was? No, we were too far away from it. Okay. It was tremendous size. Well, if we could build the aircraft carriers for the Japanese, yes. it had to be big. Right. So were the Japanese, were they taking, were they putting their aircraft carriers in mothballs at the time? Could you tell? No, it wasn't, it wasn't worth it because they, the United States aircraft blew it up. Right. Okay. And it was half sunk up there. Okay. I don't remember the name of it. That's a large vessel to see, to yeah. see like that, I imagine. Yeah. All the damage came off those aircraft carriers, too. Wow. Okay. Um, so if you had, um, if you had any pressure or stress, you mentioned on the way home where the ship stopped. And that was to avoid, possibly avoid a mine. That was the, yeah. That was the first time we we had to call general quarters, which is everybody. Yes. Where were your general quarters? I was on that gun, the back, the five-inch gun. Okay. That was on our ship. Okay. 
Yeah, it's interesting when I talk to Navy men. I just wanted to eat. Okay. Did you ever get, did you ever shoot it? No. No. But you, you knew where your general quarters were. Okay. Um, was there anything special you did or had for good luck? Yeah. What's that? I, my mother gave me a, a silver dollar. On the day I left home, and I still had it. And she said, bring it home, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, how do people entertain themselves? We had movies a couple of times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Liberty a couple of times a week. But that was cut down because so many servicemen were getting themselves in trouble. Japanese did not forgive us altogether no. at that point. Did you ever go off the ship for liberty? Did oh, you ever yeah. take liberty? Yeah. Was it interesting to go into the Oh yes, the very town? much so. Yeah. I remember seeing uh, one of these Japanese churches. What are they called? A temple, maybe? A te yeah, yeah, thank you. Right. Were you able to go inside and see it? Yeah. Yeah. We didn't stay in there long because the Japanese still were running that. And it was on the dangerous side. Did you see, so you saw civilians when you were in the Oh, city? yeah. Yeah. They would walk around freely. Right. One place I will never forget. They had a board on an easel type thing, mm -hmm. like this, uh, and the fish was tacked to the board. That's how they dried them, and with flies all over them. <laughs> it was unbelievable, but every house had a fish board. At least that's what we call it. Did you feel, did you feel uncomfortable with the Japanese civilians? Not really. Not really. No, most of them were pretty nice to us. Except they were unloading a barge of coal right on the shore opposite our ship. Mm -hmm. And they were hauling it across the harbor to the other side. And <coughs> every once in a while they flashed the Japanese flag. And of course, you never had a camera when you needed it. <laughs> no. You, you, you remember that, though. It seems yes. such a vivid memory. Yes. Was, did that seem to be mostly um, former soldiers? Former Japanese No, they soldiers? had women and men oh, working okay. the ship. and uh, they, were, they had these boards that they put on their back and a basket on either end of it. Yeah. And that's how they unloaded the ship. Ancient. Yeah. But. That's what they had at the time. That's right. That They didn't have much more than that. Yeah. It's interesting to see sometimes the culture of the people. Yeah. Yeah. In a safe way. We went to a geisha, geisha house. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody had in mind that that was a whorehouse. Yes. They weren't all. You would just go there and have tea. Yes. And talk to the, the Gisha girl. And one of them, one of our guys took advantage of that and he wanted to get her undressed. And I stepped in and grabbed him and said, get off of that girl. Nice. It's actually a beautiful part of their culture. Yeah. Yeah. Can I interrupt for a second? Pardon me? Can I interrupt for a second? Sure. One of the things that Dad has told us that um, happened frequently it was when they were on Liberty, 
a lot of the guys would uh, either get really drunk yes or drunk and uh, go to these uh, pool houses your houses and uh, dad was happily engaged to our mother and uh, it was a very very faithful um, partner. You had to go upstairs. Oh, okay. And the girls would meet you at the top of the stairs. Right. And I slipped away from the group and went into the office and I said, can I sit here? And the guy said, yeah. You don't want anything? I said, no. <laughs> and uh, one of the girls came into the office. I guess she didn't work out with a partner. <laughs> and uh, she said, what's the matter with him? <laughs> and I went like this. And the guy said, leave him alone. <laughs> Happily engaged. Yeah, I heard several, I heard, I did hear stories about that. From, from one of the veterans, I heard that if you went into the towns, this may have been Vietnam, though, you were given a booklet um, about safe places to go and um, where to stay. We didn't have anything like you that. You didn't have anything like that. It must have come later on. Yeah. Okay. As I said, it was just a, a couple of weeks after the war. Right. Yeah. Some memories probably still pretty raw, too. Did you try the food when you went on Liberty? No, we weren't supposed to. Oh, you weren't supposed to? Oh, in case she would be. Too it? many of them were getting sick. Okay. And poisoned. Right. I don't know if I'd want to eat the fish that came off one of those boards with the flies. Yeah. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> That's understandable as well. Yeah. Um, was this a place that had been bombed or attacked? Yes. Oh, it was. Okay. Pretty much just the harbor where you saw the aircraft carrier? Right. Well, probably it would be a target because it did have the aircraft carrier. So right. Did you see any signs of the destruction in the city? No. No. They were pretty that careful about good. that. They kept all of their bombing around the harbor. Okay. Now, the harbor was made of brick and cement, mm -hmm. the docks, and... Uh, that had potholes in it okay. where they had bombs. But in Okinawa you did. Say that? In Okinawa you did, right? You saw a lot of destruction. Well, yeah, oh, the Okinawa. war was over, yeah. not over then. And when you went through Okinawa on your way to Japan, did you, you saw some destruction? Yeah. Yeah, that was, I think that was, wasn't that one of the last that was the last. places in Stronghold? That was the so last. Was and there was still live ammunition around, okay. and one of them blew up on, a, on the uh, beach. Yeah. But you stayed on the ship when you were in Okinawa? You yes. You didn't go off at all? No. Okay. Because it still wasn't very really safe. No. In what fact, the, the fleet post office was blown up. <coughs> wow. It was a wooden okay. building. Okay. And that was how we got our mail from. Huh. Oh, wow. One of the other things that they would do on the ship for entertainment is they played cards. Yes. Right? Yeah. I used to hear that. <clears throat> they, right below your bunk, they had a... Yeah. I was on the top bunk, which was good, because it was cooler. Okay. And I watched thousands of dollars get lost. Wow. What would they usually play? Uh, poker. Poker, okay. One guy was a professional gambler. Oh. And he had a, a blanket that had a roulette wheel on it, uh -huh. and uh, he would spread that out over the table, and anybody that wanted to play cards 
and it got pretty expensive. Do you think he was honest? Yes. I do. Nobody shot him, so. <laughs> Go ahead and figure it out. So you didn't, you didn't usually play those games? No. No. You went to the movies, or? Yeah. Well, we oh, sat up on movie. deck and shoot the breeze. Yeah. Sometimes that's the best. It. Yeah. Was it very hot there, too? It got hot in yeah. July. In July. Okay. Yeah. And I was up on the deck with the winches. I had two winches, and they controlled the lines that went to the other ship. Yes. So it was hot doing that. Yeah. Did you have to stay in uniform, or were you able to dress down? Dungarees. Dungarees. And a polo shirt. Okay. They probably didn't have sun, give you suntan lotion, right? To no, protect they didn't. <laughs> No, they didn't. No, they and didn't. And one of the um, jobs that you all hated so much was when your commander made you paint the ship. Yeah, how many times did you have to do that and go down on the... Well, that, that was done. The yacht on... Every ship has a yacht on. Uh -huh. And it was in our division, and so we had to paint it. So my friend Lavalli, oh, yes. who was a little guy, he was elected to go up on a rope ladder and then on a, a pulley. A pulley? You could call it that, I guess. And uh, he said, I'll go, but you got to let him do it. Me. That's how we got to be real good friends. You were the only one he trusted. Yeah. So he would paint when he was on that? He painted the underside. Wow. Of the yard on. Wow. Which was probably six foot wide on one side and six foot on the other mm -hmm. side. Everything in the Navy was balanced. Yes. Made sense. Did you ever have to paint too, or were you on a team? Oh you? yeah, I was. I painted plenty. Oh, well, I'm not telling they left you down there. They were jokesters. We were over the side of the ship on a plank with rope. Yes. And we could all climb rope, but I was never good at that, even in high school. And I had to blab in my mouth about it. Uh-oh. And all of a sudden, I found myself, I was the last one down. It was chow time or something, oh. right? Yeah. And they said, we'll see ya. <gasps> and off they went. Oh, my gosh. So I had to climb up with diesel oil all over me because we walked the ship down with diesel oil get the salt off. Right. I made it, but just... So you learned... <laughs> I learned how to climb rope then. So did you seek out the ones that left you there? And... No. No, I just let it go. It was just a joke, not a joke. Yeah. That... So they knew you were in a safe place, but just... Yeah. You could have gone hungry for a while. Yeah. Nothing like your stomach to motivate you. Right. <laughs> Neat. So what color did you paint the ships? It was a it was, light gray. It was a gray. Okay. The, it was painted dark gray, wartime gray, oh, they okay. called it. And then after the war was over, they painted it, painted it with uh, Interesting. light gray. So the feeling with the, with the dark gray, you couldn't see it as well? Right. Okay. Interesting. Were, were any supply ships part of a battle? Yeah. Whatever they call it. I can't we, think of the word right now. We, the fleet. Did they ever travel with yeah. aircraft carriers and battleships? They did before I got on. Before you did. Yeah, you were after uh, that. They were in on the invasion of Palau. Okay. Which was one of the stepping stones to Japan. Right. And it was mistaken orders. But they would have blown the island right out of the water with everything that was on it. 
at that time. But they received a citation for that. They did. Mm -hmm. Didn't Dad? Didn't you say that the San Gabe was like one of the only supply ships that? Yeah, it was, was the only mine tower. Yeah. Uh huh. The was one. there, and that was a huge battle. That, yes, pull out. Yeah, I think. I wasn't did, on it. Yeah, I know. That, that was, was before your time. time. That was its history. So these supply ships would be part of the battle group too. Well, I wouldn't. I Is wouldn't really want to call it a supply ship. Uh, the, the number was AE ten, right? Which was the, the description of an ammunition ship. AE ten. Okay. Okay. Well, the, I would think that they would be targets as well as the battleships of the aircraft carriers. Oh yeah. Because the Japanese knew what they were, what they were, what they had found. I'm sure they did too. Had it, um, as far as you knew, did you know the history of the ship? Was it built for World War II? Yeah, I yeah. had the description of it somewhere where they. Uh, we did look it up. I can't remember. You can yeah, I'll get it online. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get it online. That's interesting. As long as you use that number. Yep. Okay. AE10. Okay. Did, um, what would, Bob, you know the, the, did you already tell Mary Louise about the, um, the symbol on the I ship? I did. Oh, yeah. you did. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was fa I've been fascinated seeing the different badges, and yeah. I know the VFW here has an amazing collection of the um, the, the the badges or uh -huh. whatever the, that's not what they're called, but um, and how each each division or company I'm not sure how they um, how they were all different, but it's very interesting. And obviously on planes and um, bombers, they would all have their own too. Right. This, this one had a uh, uh, a nickname that I, I can't remember what the, this woman wrapped around the torpedo or the monitor Not or the whatever flying it is. Ink. No, it was something about death. I, mean, I could kick myself for all the places that I was there that I didn't assistant. take more pictures. Yeah. Well, that's okay, because at the time, did you have a camera, or just not? Yes, I had a camera. Right My mother's old box camera. Oh, yeah. Do you know what they are? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. A little brownie. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was called. Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't too good, but it, it took pretty good pictures. You have an amazing memory, though. It's, it's yeah, really tell her about your, all you got to back here, I spilled the palm. They were supposed to wait to take me. When I enlisted in January, they said, we'll wait till after graduation. Yes. They didn't. And the 18th of June, they took me in the Navy. And my mother had it. She went up and got the diploma. Okay. So you had finished your high school education, but she went back to the phone for you. Well, I had to take a, because uh, New York State had regions. Oh, regions. Oh, they had, they've had regions that long. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what they did was they gave me a, a regions that. test from a year or two back. Really? It was the Angel's Coffin. Angels cough. Oh, goodness. Okay. I guess we're going to refer that to. Yeah, then to somewhere ID. that um, that uh, logo was saved from, from the ship. I, I remember doing a lot of research about this about two years ago to get to that, and uh, I, I don't recall where, where it is now. But it's Do you remember it now? When you see it? Pretty fascinating. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Angel's coffin. Wow. We'll definitely have to go to that website. So you you go you you look up the name of the ship and the AE10 yeah. to get mm -hmm. the to get the yeah. You know what? I'll Google. print it for you. Okay. It tells how long it was and all that. Okay. Um, it was you, built and laid down. That must mean built, right? That's when they laid oh, the keel down. Okay, right. 1941 launched. April 5th, 1942, and then it was commissioned in March of 43, and decommissioned July 20th of 1947. Okay. And we, you, you were not on the ship when it was decommissioned? No. Right. But you were there when it was? No, there was the, just a skeleton crew that Okay. Kept things ordered. Okay. Um, did you ever go to any USO shows or see any entertainers? Did they do in any boot camp? Them? We did. You d in boot camp? Yeah. Oh, Samson, okay. New York. Okay. Did you see any famous people? I'm going to say Bob Hope, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Um. Okay, we talked about leave. Do you recall any humorous... Well, you told us about the humorous event when they left you hanging. <laughs> any other unusual events? No, I think you pretty much covered them. When you were on leave, that was interesting when you would see, see the places. Yeah. Like the temples and see the way the people left. You know. I, I, can I interject? Sure. There was one story that Dad told us about uh, a black man that he befriended on the ship that oh, was right. really ostracized by, um, because you want to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. He was the uh, cook for the, cha for the chiefs of the, on the ship. Okay. And there were quite a few of them, like, say, 10 or 12. Wow. And they were all chiefs, which is the next step up from where I was. Okay. And uh, he was just such a nice guy, good looking kid. And he said, I wish they would treat me better. Because segregation was still very much alive in the Navy. The black kids got jobs in the galley and mm -hmm. stuff like that that didn't amount to a hill of beans, really. But How did you meet him? Just, I was friendly to him. Okay. And he appreciated it. Mm -hmm. When he and I used to go up on the upper deck at night when he was done with his chores, and we'd shoot the breeze. Where was he from? Florida. Florida. So he never really got the opportunity to. You probably could have done your job as well too. Oh yeah. But not given the opportunity. I had. I have heard that. Yeah. I've heard, I, I I actually interviewed a gentleman who was um, Jewish, and he was in um, he was in Belgium, and he was treated very badly. Yeah. And. Um, his wife's first husband was killed because he was Jewish. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just shocking. This doctor we had on board that didn't take care of me, he was Jewish. Yeah. And everybody despised him. Yeah. Except me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, that's good. You took the higher road because you're a good yeah. man. Yeah. Oh. Um. Did you ever pull any pranks? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell them or do you want your daughter to leave? No, no. They aren't that bad. Oh, okay. But I, I can't remember, okay. to be well, honest you with you. I, I did my share of 
Got to keep your sense of humor, right? Yeah. My biggest thing was before the war was over, the biggest thing in the lives of guys that have been on there a long time uh, was to steal a case of beer. Mm -hmm. And I remember this guy, he was a boats in second class, which is a good rank. Yes. And he strapped a case of beer on his shoulders and went down. I mean, he went down first and then strapped the beer on his shoulder. And the old man was standing right there as he got to the top. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. The old man meaning who? The, the captain of the ship. <laughs> Didn't and he, he get was, put in the brig? He was put in the brig for Aww. five days on bread and water. Five days? No cigarettes. Bread and water. So did, did anyone visit him and bring him some beer? Or I don't know how to. Oh, you weren't allowed here. I was going to tell you that I was the guard outside. Oh. And, he, and the guy that was in charge of that part of the ship said, if he gets anything caught with cigarettes or food, you'll be in there right with him. Oh. So they had you. Yeah. Because the commander, your captain of the ship was a teetotaler, right? Yeah. And so even though they carried all that beer on the ship, you guys weren't supposed we to. We were supposed to get three bottles a week. Oh, okay. And we never did. No, that's. And that was one of the supplies that you distributed as well. That was. Yeah. That was something you distributed as well. That last load that they took from San Francisco uh, was mainly food because there was no need for ammunition anymore. Right. Right. And uh, get rid of the mines. Okay. Wow. So you, you and, and again, that sailed from San Francisco, but you got onto it, you boarded it in Okinawa. Yes. Where it was waiting for you then. Must have seen some pretty active duty up until you boarded. Yeah. During the war too. So. Um, Dad, did you tell Mary Louise how you felt when you went under the Golden Gate Bridge on your way out? I didn't get specific about it. It's just a feeling. Yeah. That you're leaving your homeland. And. Okay. It's. It's sad in a way. It's like it gets yeah, you right absolutely. in the heart. Yep. Because you're really leaving and you're on this ship with all these other people. Yeah. Did many of the servicemen who were with you in boot camp travel with you to San Francisco? Yes, quite a few of them. Okay. We and we all wound up in the same division on the ship. You did. Okay. Because everything the Navy did was alphabetical. Yes. So and that's how you would be friends. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I can't. I can't imagine leaving <clears> and <throat> having that hit you, or sailing out of New York Harbor or wherever. So, yeah, yeah. Saying seeing land for the last time too as you head out. Um, what did you think of your fellow officers and servicemen? The officers we had were good. Oh, okay, good. And most of the guys in our division were, were good. Okay. They went a little crazy on liberty, but <laughs> I guess that was what they expected. Okay. Now, when you say you went to you went to church on the ship, did they have did they have a priest and? Would they say mass or was it a no. general service? It was on a bigger ship. Oh, a bigger ship. You had to ship. get into the to. small boat and travel over to the. It was a cruiser. A cruiser, wow. Which is a beautiful ship. Wow. Got real good lines to it. 
Is that the first you had been on one when you when you traveled over to that? Yeah. Wow. Were you able to spend time going through the cruiser at all, or did you just pretty much go to Mass and then come back? We, Were you able to look we around? Back, and, right? Oh, okay. Uh, but I met somebody that played. I played football with. Oh my gosh! I knelt down, and here he was, Walter Springer. Oh my gosh! From from being a, being back home, not from playing football when you were basic training. No. From back home. No, wow. it was from high school. Wow! So many of you, many of the. Um, Servicemen that you served with in basic training went with you also to Okinawa and also in that battalion on the same ship. Yes. So did you get to know some of them pretty well? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think there were three, the complement was 325 or something like that. Wow. Okay. Um, did you keep a journal? No. No? It's all right here. I should have. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so where were you when your service ended? In uh, New Orleans. New Orleans. They shipped us into New Orleans. And we naturally had a layover. And we were arrested by the sale of police. Because we were out of uniform. We had blues on. Oh. Because that was the place we were going to, New York. Oh. They had blues. So they kept us in this panel truck. Oh. Hotter and be jabbers. Oh Just to be nasty. They finally let us go. About uh, three hours later. Did you, did, what were you supposed to wear? Whites. Whites. Okay. Like what, what you see when people march? Yeah. The white? Okay. Yeah. In that book, you, the, near the back of it, you'll see it. Okay. But you had your police on and they arrested you for that. So yeah, because we were going to New York. Okay. That's and that, that was the order of the day. Okay. Um, I think it would be helpful for Mary Louise if you did like kind of a chronological. You left from from New York. You went to boot camp. From there, you went to San Diego. From right. San Diego, why don't you go through the chronological order of where you went? And then stops you made, and and on the way back. I thought I did that. Not really. It was kind of all divided. Well, I'll do the well, on the way back. You have all the beginning. Yeah, I've got leaving Grand Central, going to Samson, New York, and then um, boot camp was pretty much uneventful. And then you went took a train across the country <coughs> to San Francisco. Okay. We were getting two meals a day on that train. Were we were pretty good? 18 and 19 years old. Wow. We were starving to death. <laughs> All the time, right? All the time. <laughs> Did they feed you pretty well? Not on the train. No. Oh, okay. Because they were limited to what they could cook. What they could cook, yeah. I remember one of the black conductors. Orders, yeah. There was a little grill there, right there where we stopped for water, where they put in the in the locomotive. Right. And he took money from everybody. And, and he got into this cafe, and they couldn't fill the order altogether. Huh. So Captain blew the the ship that. No. Train. The train, the train whistle, master. Yeah. He blew the whistle and the guy didn't come because he still had his water in it. Oh. And he come running down the track with this big bundle of food. <laughs> and that train kept right on and going. So all the money we gave him oh, no. and 
all the food. It just And at least he tried. Yeah. <laughs> so is he considered a wall, do you think? Well he wasn't in the service. He was working for oh, the he railroad. Was support, he was for, for the railroad. Okay. Yeah. So he probably got on some other train, but oh trying to help you out. And this was out in the boondocks of Midwest. the Midwest. Jeez. <laughs> so coming and back. And it all. I can still see him running down the track. Aww. With your tongues hanging out, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure. We were all yelling, stop the train. <laughs> uh, on the way back, we went by Iwo Jima, where they were just where they just flattened everything, except that one ridge yeah. that was the flag raising. Yes. You've seen that. Yes. But the rest of the island was just blown to hell. Right. That was a terrible battle. Yeah. So did you did you dock there at all? No, or did you we stay kept running and going, it? but the the captain of, of our ship slowed it down to a point where we could see Mount Suravachi and all yes. that stuff. Yeah. Uh, we went from there to the Panama Canal. Okay. And were there any, when you when you went past Iwo Jima, were there any ships or any troops still there? A lot there? of them. A lot yeah. of them. Yeah. Wow. So through the Panama Canal. We stopped on the other side, on the Atlantic side, from and we stayed there for about two days, okay. and that was the wildest place I've ever been in my <laughs> life. Was that Liberty, or you yeah. just got off and? I didn't get Libby the first day, but I was on the boat that brought him back to the ship. Did you ever see that mo movie, Mr. Roberts? Yes. <laughs> it was like that. I didn't. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he Did was, they were, everybody was pacified. Uh. We had to carry them up the gangway. I was going to say, did you ever did you ever lose any? Did any ever not make it back to ship? Or no. They made sure each other each, yeah. each other did. Oh. Probably the sailor police brought them. Oh, uh, could have been. Yeah. <laughs> so did you, when you had liberty, did you did you eat anything, or again you didn't eat? You only yeah, ate it, that, this was in. Uh, this was in. It's Panama City. Panama City. Panama City, so it was a little safer. Yeah. They just had too many whorehouses, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the guys got plastered. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say that I wasn't feeling a little good. <laughs> but at least you, you were a little more cautious than you Yeah. Was. You had that fiance. Had you proposed to her before you left? No. You had. Okay. We were as good as engaged though. Okay. <laughs> so after Panama City, where'd you go after that? New so Orleans. New Orleans. Did, did you stop at Texas? Galveston, Texas Galveston. was where the dry dock was. Okay. So you went to New Orleans and then to Texas? Yep. Or Texas first and then New Orleans? No. New you Orleans. had it right the first yeah. time. Okay. And what did you drop off in New Orleans? Why did you go there? Well, we got rid of a lot of the uh, ammunition that we had still. Mm -hmm. Okay. And some of the mines. Mm -hmm. But they weren't prepared to take anything from us. And they had to wait till the, the ship was decommissioned. And then they took it over. Oh, I see. Now you said on, on the way across the Pacific that you were dumping some things too. Yeah, we threw 
shells after shells okay. by the handfuls over wow. the side. And that was your job? You remember doing that? Oh, yeah. Wow. Everybody was in on that. Wow. Because every gun placement on our ship was loaded with ammunition. Right. So, but it's in the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. So then, Dad, after Galveston, you helped with the dry dock, didn't you? Yeah. And then you went back to New Orleans and then home? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were discharged from New Orleans? Yes. Okay. Well, no, we were discharged okay. from Lido Beach in Long Island. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, we were okay. processed through New Orleans. Okay. Okay. Oh, right. Because your your little card says Lido Beach. Okay. Do you remember that day that you were discharged? Yes. Yeah. What was it like? Just a wonderful feeling. Was it? Uh, everybody just was so homesick and yeah. wanted to get home. And my father was parked down away from the, the where you walked out because it was all fenced in. Mm -hmm. And I guess they made a move. He went right up to the gate with his car and they told him, you can't come in here. You've got to go down here. So we walked. There were three of us that got together. Kelly was from New Jersey. And Lavalle was from Tupper Lake, New York. And me. And we rode from Lido Beach to Lynbrook, Long Island. And Kelly got on a uh, train and took him to Jersey. The Valley stayed overnight with me. And then he got on the ra railroad, the Long Island Railroad. He went home, but he wanted to see where I live. You're your best buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what, so who met you, Dad, from the train? Just Grandpa? Or did Mom and Nanny come along? No, they were at the house. Okay. My he, father drove from Lido Beach to home. Describe when you walked in the house and were pulled in the driveway. Yeah, what was your homecoming like? It was very special and my mother let me see, kiss my girlfriend <laughs> first. <laughs> That's important. On the way wow. to boot camp, she wanted to be last. So that was kind of sad about her doing that. But when I got home, Emily came running out of the house. Wow. And my mother was right behind her. <laughs> Their mother. Yep. But that's, that's a beautiful thing when you say it was sad in a way. I think in a way it's a beautiful Being a mom, yep. my son's engaged, and I've had to step back a couple times. but. I'm still his mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Big mom. And that's right. I love that he has he has a wonderful woman that he's going to marry. And I'm sure your mom felt that way about your fiance. Yes, she did. Yeah, I'm sure she did. Now you said you were very homesick. Did it did it hit you when you went through the Panama Canal too, or New Orleans, or really not too? No, much I would say that at that time I was just anxious to get home. You just wanted to get home. But when you were there, that's when it was, I really am home. My dad's there. I do see my sweetheart and my mom. Dad, was was your brother home then too? 
Yeah, but he wasn't at the house. Oh. He was in New York. Uh-huh. His, did you tell Mary Louise about your brother? Yeah, did he? He said that he was in the army. He was a captain. He had a pretty infantry. Yeah. He was involved in a lot of the major major battles. In fact, they made him mayor of Ulm, O L M, Germany. Really? I guess every big town had a a head of it. Right. And he was head of it. Because really? he had helped liberate. Yeah. Amazing. He had, he had a tough time. Yep. It, evidently, this town was a, Yom. Germany was, a manufacturing town. Yes. So it was heavily guarded, but. They established a beachhead across the river. Yes. They were the first one to get over the river. So he was a pretty important guy. He wrote a book uh, before he died, and I, I can lend it to you. Um, it's called Burps and... Bombs. Burps and Bombs, yeah. Burps and something. Yeah. They had a gun that was called a burp gun. Yes. That's what it sounded like. Well, it, it, and it must have been amazing for him to meet Germans that he had liberated. It's, it's almost like the Japanese. The Japanese people were really not treated well by the leaders during the no, war. They, weren't. they were treated horribly. And I remember one incident where two guys were in a jeep and there was a bunch of Japanese walking along the side of the road. They weren't in the middle of the road, they were on the side. Right. And this jeep came along and pushed them right off. The, the American serviceman was a terrible thing when he got liberated. He liberated, yeah. yeah. You know, Dad had a... Um, are Mary? we keeping you too long? No, I'm loving this. <laughs> Dad had a very good adolescent friend, I can't think of his name, who was a Japanese American. Mm -hmm. And you always have wondered what happened to them, but tell Mary Louise how <coughs> you know guarded they were. I can't, can't I think remember. Their mother and father were put in a the camp in right. Japanese. Right. Yeah. What what was his name again? You got me. I've been trying to think. Neil. Neil's started with an S. Yes. Yeah. But anyhow, he was my good friend in high school. Mm -hmm. But then you you just lost contact with them probably because they were put in the detention camps, right? No, they had a, they were left back in the in their house. Oh. They did come back. When they proved that they weren't subversive or uh -huh. anything like that. Uh -huh. um, Neil went to high school with them. Wow. Well. Now, what did you do in the days and weeks after you came home with a discharge? Well, somebody told one of my rich uncles who lived and worked in New York, he, and they asked him if they could get me a job. And he said, I'll see what I can do, and he called a friend of his that worked in CARE, C-A-R-E, yes. was sending packages overseas. Oh, okay. And sure in hell, he got me a job. I was just a office boy, but that was a job. In New York, right? Yeah, and I then became an assistant statistician. Okay. Let's be good at math. <laughs> 
I don't well, know. you had to take care of all those supplies and organize them, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you go, did you take advantage of the GI Bill at all? Go back to school? Yes. That was the next thing I was going to tell you about. Okay. I worked as a kid on Bulk's nurseries in Long Island, Babylon, Long Island. And I decided that that's what I wanted to do. I hated the city. I hated that my job. It didn't keep me busy enough. So, I went to the VA and they said, yeah, we can establish a program with, with the nursery. This is a big nursery. And that's where I worked for two years on the, on the job GI Bill. Okay. And then from there you bought the flower shop. Yeah. When you were married then. No, mm -hmm. we weren't married. No. And did you have? Well, the you check made the flowers. Oh, oh, right. From our shop. Mm -hmm. Did uh, your wedding? Yes. Did the GI Bill help with uh, building the shop and building the house? We got a GI loan no. for the house. The GI mm -hmm. loan, okay. But not for the shop. Um, now, I, I asked you about your close friend, and he was the um, LaBally, right? Yes. And you kept in touch with him, and he was in your wedding? Yep. Right. And um, I was supposed to be in his wedding, but I couldn't get off from work. Oh. So where did he, where did he live? In Tupper Lake, New York. Tupper Lake, New York. Which okay. is in the Adirondacks. Okay. That was that much farther away. Um, what did you do, uh, the, so the career after your service was to own and run a nursery, right? Yeah. Did you do that throughout your life? Yes. In, in New York? Right? I ran that for 13 years, that 13 flower years. shop. Wow. Built it up from nothing. It was, we bought it from an old lady that just bought it for a hobby. Okay. And. I was there 13 years, and then we moved to Sheffield. Well, Dad had a client also who um, had a, an, an apple orchard in Sheffield, and you would come and do the pruning, right? No. Is that how it worked? No. He hired me, and I was to run the orchard, but I, I couldn't get away from the garden shop until we sold it. So it came out the last minute, okay. and somebody from New York bought it. Okay. So he knew you were New York, but he was from Sheffield, where he had this apple orchard? Well, he was in from Long Island. He was a, the head of Liberty Aircraft, oh. which was a big operation. And he bought this land that included the orchard. Okay. And he wanted somebody to run it for him, because he was very interested in plants. And... Uh, So that's what so brought him up here. Yeah, and that's what brought me to Sheffield. Yeah, so, and we my lived on the Mountain brother, Road. Okay, on the Mountain Road. Right. Where the orchard was. Okay. My so oldest brother, right? Grew that's up right. Yes. Okay. Yep. My oldest brother, Jim and Bob, were born on Long Island. And when they moved up here, my mother was expecting me. Okay, so, so you were I, born here. I was born up here. My grandfather, Dad's father, called me a New England bohong. It's, it's, I don't, it's Dad's cocktail time. So. Oh, absolutely. We can have, we, we have, can, can we I have you? get you something? No, because I, have, I actually have to shop on my way home and oh. get dinner, so I'm good. Okay. But thank you very much. Okay, I'll try to finish up here because you're probably thirsty.
Um, well, I could drink while you talk. <laughs> okay, you go ahead. <laughs> um, how did your military experience influence your thinking about war or the military in general? I said this at one meeting at Linda School that I thought every young man should go in the service for a short period of time. I mean, just a year or so. Mm -hmm. So that's what I thought of the Navy. I have ha I've heard many veterans say that. They think it's a good experience for oh. any, any young person. I wouldn't have traded for anything because uh, it made me what I was. Yes. Um, did you join any veterans organizations? Yeah, I belonged to the VFW in Lindenhurst. Okay. Are you act? Are you still active? Do you no. did you join one up here? No. Did you ever attend reunions? Were there only, ever any reunions? Only Florida you... reunions. Okay. <laughs> but you. You got together with some of your really close buddies. Oh yeah, I told her that. Yeah. Yes. Now was that was it formal or was or was it more through your friend and said you know hey have you heard from so and so and let's just yeah, get together. Yeah, that's about what it was. We How had we, a couple of drinks. Yeah. And they left pretty quickly. But that, was it a good was it a good thing when you got together with him? And oh yeah, nice. Passed over the memories. Yeah. yeah, and I visited him in Tupper Lake. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so your service and experience affected your life. It said it made you who you are today. Yes. Right. Um, but did you ever did you ever get any compensation for your injuries though? No. And Never. It, did it, did it really affect your movement throughout your life? Well, I had a bad back for years and oh, years yeah. and years. Okay. They used to take me to the chiropractor yeah. in Great Barrington okay. and carried me in wow. and I walked out. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> right? Yes. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? I haven't asked you or? No, I just would like to praise the Navy and, and all the armed forces. They made a man out of me. And that's about all I can say. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Law. It's You're welcome. meeting you. And for your service. <laughs>